Welcome everybody, I'm John. This is the John 5XR channel. Today we have a very special installation video and it is for the man in the box clutch spring lifter plate. This is a really cool product that I went over very thoroughly in a what's on the bench episode. You can find that back a little bit or I'll just pop it up here for you and you can click through and get oriented with what the product is and what it's for and basically the info on it. So I'm gonna skip that in this video and then we're just gonna get to the installation process and what it takes to install the part. So before you get involved in starting work on this bike, I'm going to advise you pick up a few special tools along the way that will help you out when you get to that one part in the manual where it says use special tool. Uh-oh, what do I do? So anyways, the first thing you're gonna wanna get is the factory manual, of course. Basically, you're looking at the clutch disassembly. So you're getting right to the point to where you're going to pull the clutch off, but instead of pulling the whole clutch off, you just pull the lifter plate and the springs out. So it's not difficult. You do have to drop the side case, and along the way, you're going to find out that you need to disconnect some stuff regarding the rear set. I go over it all in the video. So back to the special tools. First special tool is right here. This is a clutch nut removal tool. So basically the clutch nut, the nut that goes on the oil spinner actually, you don't need to do the clutch, but it could. The oil spinner has a nut that basically has four notches in it like this. It looks like a chess piece kinda. So um, these four little pegs go into that nut and then with that the other important tool you're gonna wanna have a half inch um, driver because this tool here takes a half inch driver just like that so that's easily found on Amazon gonna make it even easier for you in the description for this video I'll put a link to the tool that I got so you know it works okay moving on to the next thing you're probably gonna want to pick up but you can get away without it because as you will see in the video I do not use it because the one I bought it not the right size so that sucks, but the uh, holder tool. So you'll see in the manual, this is a flywheel holder, a flywheel holder tool. And basically these pegs stick in the hole of the oil spinner, and then you can hold it while you're loosening up that big uh, castle nut type thing. So unfortunately the pegs on this were too, too big. The holes on the oil spinner were too small. So what I'm gonna do, uh, I'm going to find the, the correct tool and then put the link in the description for that. These things are really cheap. You're not going to break your budget on them. I mean, I'm talking like they're eight to twelve dollars cheap. So you might as well get them because this might be something you need to do more than once if you ever want to change the springs out or something again to something stiffer. So it's it's just not the worst kind of things to have in your shop. Is what I'm saying. Okay, so now that you know what you need, you know what the product is because you watched the what's on the bench about it, right? So let's get to the install. Uh, this is not a difficult install, but you're gonna wanna, you know, get the right tools, obviously, and then get some rags because it's gonna be oily. So uh, also in here, I'm gonna kinda go through the process of the manual and take shortcuts where I need them because they're not necessary um, and just kinda show you how I did it. Not to say that it's the 100% correct way to do it, but it got the job done. So, hope you enjoy it. Let's check it out.
Okay, so we just installed the man in the box clutch spring lifter plate. Really nice little part. Looks good on the bike, even though you won't see it once you button it all up. And the install was pretty straightforward. The manual says how to do it, and uh, that's what I followed. So if you followed my procedures, you're basically following the manual's procedures. I do want to mention something about the torque. Uh, I am not really a practicer of torquing um, bolts that call for like nine foot pounds of torque because the torque wrenches I have are not really that sensitive at that low of a torque setting. So basically I'd have to get like a quarter inch, uh, inch pound torque wrench, convert it to inch pounds or convert it to foot pounds, I'm sorry. So what would nine foot pounds equal in inch pounds? So I have a more precise, smaller wrench. I didn't do any of that because nine foot pounds in my opinion is like I can kind of feel it out what nine foot pounds would be. So uh, use your discretion on that. You'll notice I didn't use the torque wrenches. If you do want to use torque wrenches, you're going to need a, a three eighths torque wrench, um, a half inch torque wrench for the for the castle nut that's on the oil spinner, and then probably that quarter inch torque wrench as well. So you're going to need a variety of them. So if you have them, that's cool. Use them. If you don't. Try to use feel. So basically all these smaller 10 and 8 millimeter bolts are, well the 8 millimeter bolts are all going to be like 9 foot pounds or less. So I used my discretion. Um, the clutch springs are supposed to be held in with those three bolts. That is 9 foot pounds of torque. I asked uh, my friend Rodney Sargent about this, what he recommended. He recommended 7 pounds and he says he's never used a torque wrench. He just kind of goes by feel, just like I did. So that's what I did. Took the bike for a ride. Everything works great. So that's my note on that. Don't take that as gospel. Take that as how I did it. And if you want to do it that way, that's how I did it. So after all that talk about torque and how I don't use torque wrenches, I want to show you one thing right here. So the camera's not going to focus on it, but this is, in fact, one of those nice aluminum red bolts that I showed you in one of my previous videos. Um, the dress up bolt kit basically. So that happened. It broke. So this was the bolt that was on the front bottom of the right crankcase cover and it half broke in the thread. So that's no fun ever. And um, I really didn't feel like spending the time to try to get it out of there right now so I just did as Larry Enticer does and sent it and uh, it does matter because the crankcase is weeping a little bit of oil in that area where that case comes together so that's a bummer anyways um, if you like these bolts and you, you ordered them and you use them just be really really gentle when you're tightening them in uh, tightening them because uh, they are soft and as much as aluminum bolts should work, um, you just can't put a lot of torque on any bolt that's this size. So an aluminum bolt on this size is going to be even more critical that you are gentle with it. So my hand torque didn't really work on these bolts. But anyways, on the factory bolts, you should be fine. So that's where I'm going to shut it down for tonight. Uh, I already took the bike out for a ride. I did a video, a moto vlog, while I was doing that, kind of showing you how the clutch was and what how it felt. So uh, I'm gonna post that separate after this uh, because this is probably gonna be a little bit too long to put all that in there. So um, with that, that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the process of installing the man in the box clutch spring lifter plate. And just a, a little bit of a note that the 15% uh, springs that came with this, the EBC springs for man in the box, they have a factory feel to them. They're not much different than the um, factory springs. So if you want a really stiff clutch and you do a lot of wheelies and you're wanting to clutch pop a lot, you might want to go to the 30% the 30 stiffer springs or even the 60% stiffer springs. Just a little note based on what I found on my initial rides. So with that, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you like it. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. If you give me a thumbs down, let me know why. Let's talk about it. Also, check out my new Discord server, Honda Monkey 125 Enthusiast. Thanks again. See you later. Wow.